Hey, good to have you back. So far in this series, we've taken a look at how we can add reactive client-side views to a Vaadin application. In this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper and connect those views to the backend using our new endpoints feature, which allows us to communicate with the server in a type safe way. So let's get started. Now, as you remember, we have a view here where we have a input field and a list of people, and we're able to add new people to the list. The problem here is that if we refresh our view here, you can see we lose all the state. So we're not saving uh, this state anywhere. What I want to do is I want to create a backend for the application. And then instead of saving things just locally in, in memory in the browser, we're actually going to save those to the server so that we can uh, refresh the browser and, and still maintain our, our app state here. So let's go into our project here and jump into the Java sources. And in the views demo folder, we'll create a new file person.java. So this will be our data model. The person will look exactly the same as we had before. So it'll only have a name for now. It'll just be a string like this. And we'll create a constructor it takes in that name and assigns that. So this dot name equals name. And then we can create getters and setters so that we have something to access it with. All right, then we'll go into the endpoint, which is kind of where the magic happens. So by annotating a service class with this endpoint, you make any of the methods that are in here available to you through TypeScript. So first of all, I'm just going to create a in memory list for us. Let me close the sidebar here. So we'll create a list. Let's see list. Let's import that of person objects. We'll call this people and initialize this to a new, let's do linked list like that. And then we'll create two uh, methods. So the first one is to just return all the people that we have from before. So this will be a public list of person objects, get people. And this one's pretty easy. So we just call return with the list of people. Second one is for saving a new person. So this one will be also public. Here we're just going to return the saved person. So we're returning a person and we're going to call this save person and take in a name. So we'll do a new person, pass in the name and save this to a variable like that. And we'll add this to the list of people. So we'll take people dot add, pass in the person, and then finally, return the saved person so that we can add them to the list on the on the client side. All right, so we'll save that. And we'll jump into our TypeScript view here. And what I want to do first of all is clear out the uh, the person that we had here from before, and I'm going to define the type of this uh, field here to be a person array. So you can see that uh, we have a person TypeScript interface now generated by Vaadin. So we can now share the same data type between the server and our client here. All right. And then I want to make sure that whenever we add this view to our app, that we go down to the server and fetch those people. For that, I'm going to use a connected callback. So that's called whenever this element, this component is added to the DOM. We want to make sure that we call super.connectedCallback just so the HTML superclass gets a chance to do its thing. All the calls that we make to the server are asynchronous and the easiest way to deal with those is to use async await. So mark the method here with the async keyword. And then what that allows us to do is deal with asynchronous operations in a really clean manner. So what we can do is call this dot people and have that equal to await. So we await for the answer from the server and then we set the people arrays value and we'll await for 
get people. So again, you can see we have an auto import here. And this is the method that we defined here in our endpoint. Technically under the hood, what happens is that this demo endpoint will generate a REST endpoint and a TypeScript wrapper for that in addition to the type definitions. So under the hood, we're still using REST, but from a programming standpoint, this is quite a lot nicer to work with and it's type safe all the way through and through. All right, so right now we don't have any people on the server and we don't have a way of adding people to the server. So let's go ahead and fix that. So instead of just adding people directly to the array here on the client, what I'll do is I'll call the server to add the person and then I'll capture the person that got saved and add that to the array. So let's call this saved is equal to await. And again, for the await to work, we need to add the async keyword to our uh, method here. So we'll await save person. Again, that's the save person method. And that takes in the name. So this dot name. And that will return the saved person. And then we can add the saved person here to our list. Like so. Save this and see if this works. So I should be able to add myself here. Let's add Rudolph back like that. And now if we refresh, what you should see is that we're still seeing the same list of people because those are now stored on the server. All right, so there you have it. We've now connected our client side view to the server in a type safe manner using Bodden endpoints. In the next video, I want to show you a little bit of tips and tricks on how you can debug a client side application using the browser dev tool. So I hope you'll stick around for that and ask any questions again in the comments below and I'll try to answer those later on. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.